come on. A few rounds. You can handle that. No. You seek to humiliate me. I sparred most of day already. You know I'm tired. You're a fierce warrior woman. Why are you afraid of me, huh? The Man Destroyer, come on! I say no. I want to eat. I got something right here for you to eat, bitch. You piece of shit! Stupid whore. You'll regret that. Shit. It was bad. They will hurt me tomorrow. Who are you? You fight beasts? Why are you here, Tabat? You train gladiators now? <laughs> you do not mince your words. I like that. My name is Deanera. I ask you, what happens to us when the Lanista is dead? Your legion. You fight Mithridates? I am Shuthian, from East. My people fight Pontus. Pontus takes us as survey, sell us to Greeks. It is how I am here. I will help you, Tabat. Other gladiators, they care about me. I am like little sister to them. Tell me, what is your plan? <laughs> that was madness! I have been waiting for this for so long! Let us go and deal with this pig! I want to see the look on his face now he is beat! You used my own gladiators against me! Don't you understand what danger you've put us all in? On your feet, Anista. You are ingenious. And in your brilliance, one day you will either get yourself killed, or bring about the ruin of the Republic. We have heard enough out of you, Damianos. You should be quiet now, and try to face your death like a warrior. Don't kill him. He deserves worse fate than that. He should try being Cerberus himself. Killing him is the safest option. He clearly holds a lot of sway in this region. The locals might try to rescue him if we keep him alive. I don't want to. Get Bestia to do it if you don't want to either. I will bring this hapless fool back to the Legion camp. See you there. So we are free now, but we have nothing. I will join your Legion, if you will take me to Rome when the war is finished. I am Deanera. Is good to meet you. Shuthia. They are lands north and east of here. Wide steps. Lot of space for roaming. It is. Lanista gave it to me. It means man destroyer. I think I will keep it. Names have power in some way. New name means fresh start. I do not. You are in charge. I fight for you. You show me Rome. We know she's a force to be reckoned with in a fight. And Khaled has already shown us that women have a place in war. It wouldn't be terrible to have another woman among us. I've heard so much about it. It's center of world, right? Big streets, spices, fabric, wine. I want to try these things. Good. We will win war first, and fast. Then we will go to Rome. You will be glad you brought me with you. You may need to unlearn some of your Scherthian ways, and get used to fighting in Roman formations. You know much about Scherthian fighting? You'll find that our warfare is much more organized, and more effective than what you're used to. Welcome to the war, Deonera. We'll take good care of you, don't worry. Another violent foreigner with questionable morals added to our ranks, then. I'm not certain this is altogether wise. 
All I owned was taken when I was captured. If you can spare weapons and armor, it would be good. Have question? Mother taught me. It is not so unusual in Shutia. Women hunt and fight. I know it's weird here. And you? How did you learn? He did a good job. You fight well. Other people come into our lands often. We fight them. I was taken as Serva, sold to Greek man. I am too unruly to be Greek wife, but I make good gladiator. Fighting for sport is dumb. Trying to get rid of me? You people brought me here. Sorry, now you're stuck with me. Exactly. Damianos told me quite much about it. I want to see for myself. I... can't go back. I'm not that woman anymore. Maybe some other day we will speak of this. Have question? Then we'll return to Rome. Are you looking forward? You are good at war. It is understandable you will miss it. But I'm sure you will find something else to be good at in Rome. You have mother and sister there, right? I am sorry. If she has value to him, perhaps at least she is safe. Small consolation, I know. I had sister too. I would not wish such loss on anyone. She was killed. I... I did not stop it. I will keep that in mind. Thank you. I have wanted to come to Rome for so long. I am almost nervous now. That is what everyone says. Now I get to see it for myself. I'll let you know if I agree. You are happy to be home? There is so much to like about freedom outside cities. But I grew up in camps. We moved and moved. For once I just want to sit still. Or lie in soft pillows, perhaps. With a glass of fancy wine, some grapes... I have no place to stay, of course. I can stay in your home, maybe. Just for now. That is generous. Thank you. I will try to find a place for myself, but it is good to know there is no rush. We will see. Maybe I will hate it. Then I will have to go and find some place else to be. But I think I will want to stay. If I can find place to live. You think it will be bad? Maybe you can help me buy nice Roman stola. Then I will fit in. Right? We will go shopping. It will be fun. Why would I want to keep fighting when I don't have to? Fighting is a necessity of life. It is not sport. I did not come to Rome to keep fighting. How is it? You don't like the dress? Is it normal in Rome for important people to make such shameless advances on their guards? Is good we are not normal, then? Hmm. In some ways it is. In others, it is not. City is big. I have never seen anything like it. And there are so many things to buy. So many different people. I love that. But there is a strange way people talk to me. Not because I am foreign. I think... But because I am woman. That I don't like. I would like that, if it is fine with you. This villa is amazing. So many statues and fancy carpets. I love your garden. It's so lush and green. And trickle of fountain calms me down. I am sorry. He meant so much to you. How do you feel? It is too much to go through once. Even for one as strong as you. 
We will make war again, I guess. You are back in your element, it seems. Hey, what do you need? It's same in some ways, but personal this time. I think that will be an advantage. Killing should not be impersonal. Should not be done for coin, either. Vengeance is worth killing for. I will stand by your side when you take the Pharaoh's head. Maybe. I have much to do before that can happen. Big mistakes to atone for. Is not too different from home, it seems. People here, Berbers, they live in tribes and move around a lot. If they are like my people, do not make mistake of treating them as one. No one in tribe will speak for everyone. Always there is dissent. Not that I know. Egyptians are not like Rome or Greece. They're ancient kingdom, but they mostly keep to themselves. I like her. She is charming and sophisticated, but suddenly she is very brash and mean. In tribal society like this, that is best you can hope for. I don't know about Lunya, though. Keep eye on her. She has look in her eye, like she knows something we do not. Did you eat? I want to show you something. There is village up this path. They make jewelry and they have small market. Come on, bring your coin pouch and let us go look. It'll be fun. If nothing else, you talk sometimes of winning over hearts and minds, right? We can make some friends here. But I am. And I need your help to choose what I will buy. Which one should I buy? You still think I must be all about practical matters because of the life I lead? I thought you would know me better than that by now. But I do like the hair clip. I will buy it. Thank you. That old woman's family has offered that we can sleep under that half-roof beside their house. I think it is safer than going back now, and I'm sure we will not be missed until tomorrow. Why not? The people here are friendly. And we have each other. You are being quite silly, you know that. Village is very safe. Come join me in here. Is it all right? I know this may be not appropriate, but you have been showing interest in me, I thought.
Deianera, looks like she's been floating ever since you started seeing each other. <laughs> I'm glad. You make a formidable couple. You are back in men's clothes. It makes so things way, a Domine. lot easier. I saw you wearing dress in Rome. You are beautiful. Shame to hide it. I thought you of all people would understand. Why? Your customs. Women are no different from men among your people, are they? I would not say it like that. It is all right to wear fine dress and jewelry sometimes, and fight other times. I see. Well, not among Romans. It's either or to us. So what? You are friend to Legatus. You could wear dress if you wanted. I don't want to. Ah, well, that is a much better reason. So, Deianera finally went for it, huh? She's been working up the courage for a few years, you know. You know what? I honestly think that may be true. I'm really happy for you. You're very cute together. To see you always brightens my day. Not for so long. When I found that village, I just felt I had to show it to you. Nothing was really planned. I had a wonderful time, though. I hope you enjoyed it as well? I would like that very much. I love you. <laughs> I see my long plan to steal your lovely big tent has borne fruit. I will be there. You can count on it. Two legions, huh? You are moving up in the world. Will make some people back in Rome very unhappy, I'm sure. Still, you think two legions is a match for Egypt? <laughs> then we will win simply by not being idiots. You may be right. Wait, stop. I know that man. Legate, do you trust me? I... Thank you. I need you to do something for me then. Lure that merchant. Him there, selling Surrey. To Ali's back there, behind the buildings. Good. I will hang back a little. Don't tell him it is about me. A Roman. And an officer, no less. It's good to finally meet some civilized people around here. Uh, please, come closer. Come closer. Do you like what you see? The Liberator of Asia Minor. My people owe you much. You have freed us from the shadow of a true tyrant. I am Habron, a humble merchant from Vithynia. It is an honor to make your acquaintance. I don't, but I accept food products and medicine and what have you in exchange for my goods. If you're looking for something, I may be able to supply it. The Roman invasion has left many of the people here destitute and homeless in its wake. I offer them a way out of starvation. Service is preferable to death, wouldn't you say? If they do well enough, they may eventually earn a wage. Oh, I'm quite sorry, but I really can't leave my stall. Oh, that's very generous. I can't turn down an offer like that. Very well, let's talk over there, behind those buildings. Hello, Habron. Hello? I I'm sorry, have we met? Do not play idiot. We are well acquainted. My name is Deanera, but you know me as Zerichi. You must have me mistaken for someone else. I've You never... killed my sister! No, I didn't. All right, yes, I remember you. I did not kill your sister. Where is Silvius now? Tell me. I haven't seen him in years. Last I heard, he was back in Rome. He holds an important position in the Collegium Bacchus. Thank you. That is enough. Well then. Just one left now. Zerichi is what my parents called me. As I have said, I prefer Deanera. 
There were three men to kill. First, man who tricked us with wine and words. He died when they attacked us. Next was man who put me in cage and sold me to Damianos. This man, Habron. Last is man who killed my sister when we fought back, Silvius. I will find him in Rome, it seems. Good idea. No one saw us, I think. There are a collegium dedicated to underground orgies of drunken debauchery. The Senate can ban them as hard as they want, it will do nothing. I may have participated in some of their events in the past, uh, before they were outlawed. They're funded by fees collected from the participants of their events. All membership is kept secret, of course. Every event is held in a new place. Finding them will be very difficult. I will find them. I have little doubt you will. My love, I hate to do this, but we must part here. There is something important that I have to do, and I must do it alone. I wish that I could say that I will see you soon, but I'm not sure that's true. I know. It breaks my heart as well. But I cannot be the woman you deserve until I have dealt with this. I need to find man who killed my sister, Silvius. Habron said he is important member of Collegium Bacchus. If he is not here, he has cause to return at least. And when he does, I will be waiting. I am not sure yet. I will see what he does when he is found. It is best to not involve you, but thank you for offering. I hope I will. Who are you? Why did you kill that man? No more blood needs to be spilled here. Please, just tell us what you want. That does not sound like something I would do. How long ago was this? We're just a group of regular citizens who gather regularly to enjoy the finer things in life. Nobody is hurt, I swear on you no Capratina. The women are here by their own choice. The Senate has outlawed our gatherings, it's true, but only because they don't understand. They've given in to populist sentiment and slanderous rumors, that's all. Nothing we do here is wrong. Listen, I'm certain we can come to some sort of agreement. You are bereaved. Do you seek compensation? Get your hands off me! The bitch killed Sylvia! She's mad! Stop her! I would never. Find your clothes and get out. They finally let you in. Heard you had been trying to see me. It's good to see you too. You look well. More mature. I guess I have been here longer than I thought. They told me you tried to visit often. But it was not allowed. I've missed you too. I'm... Sorry. I ruined everything. That's right. But I have surrendered to the anger mine you. The destructive spirit for many years. I wonder if there is any way back. I hope this guilt I carry every day would fade when I had vengeance. But still, when I think of her, I feel pressure around my heart. Her name was Tusa. She was two years younger than me. She loved horses more than anything else. And they seemed to love her back. She was my best friend. We braided each other's hair and hunted rabbits. We were always competing together against our brothers. And we always won. I have not followed Threefold Path of Asha. I have spread grief instead of happiness. I have blackened my soul with evil thought and evil deeds. If I stay here and face my execution, maybe I will be redeemed in the eyes of the wise lord.
You think it is like that? A merchant scale where you can just put down good deeds to weigh up the bad? <laughs> if only. It seems you understand me better than I understand myself. It is not the same. You bear no blame for those you lost. I do. I wanted to go to the Greek city. I wanted wine and spices and beautiful dresses. She was scared, but I told her I would keep her safe. I was eager and naive, and they exploited it. They lured us with pretty promises and tried to force themselves on us. We fought back. I killed one of them. Then Silvius killed Tusa. Every part of it, every single thing that led to her death was my fault. I know what you say is true, but what I feel is different. It doesn't matter what you say, and you didn't even know her. I would. Of course I would. Maybe one day. I will be able to. I guess that will not happen if I am executed though, huh? What would I do without you? I love you. Took a big hit. How was your day, my love? We took Alexandria. A helmet it's war of fools, I think. Your countrymen are fools to believe Lurko's lies. The Gauls are fools to stand against us. And we are fools for getting caught up in it. I got this you got me out of a very dark place. Now I am here to do the same for you. See this tooth I'm missing? It was your day, my love. Would have been no trouble at all if Lurko, that swine, had not disappeared. Then he comes back and acts like nothing happened. With ally like that, who needs enemies? How was your day, my love? Ambiorix is a man. With very few exceptions, I always expect the worst. And you? I hope you do not feel guilty. I admire that in you. How you can take your anger and make it work for you. Tell me, why do we not just march whole legion into Rome and push Lurko off throne? It has special chair for man in charge, does it not? Call it what you will. It is not a thing to be done lightly. You have chance now to make things better. Rome is not as I had hoped, before I saw it with my own eyes. There is so much squalor and suffering. In Wild, it is possible for man to have dignity, even in poverty. In City, this is not so. I think so too. People in charge now, they benefit from uncertainty and fear. You could bring stability and peace. Anyway, I don't think I will stay here after we are done. It's time for me to face my past and move on. You've been dreaming of this since the day your father died. By Jupiter's beard. When will you finally understand it never was about you or your sad excuse for a family? I had plans. Great plans for Rome. The Republic is crumbling. But the establishment always hates the revolutionary. Your father was a spy. A tool of the state. He fought for the status quo. I was forced to eliminate him to save Rome. Maybe. What's clear is that somebody must take charge. The point was never becoming the king. It was that Rome needed a king in the first place. Someone who could cut through the endless dog shit coming out of the Senate. The blatant tribalism, the spiteful self-sabotage, the bribery and greed. We need someone who is willing and able to make difficult and unpopular decisions. Clearly. It doesn't matter if you kill me. In fact, I'm content. You are clearly a better choice to lead Rome. It seems the park I intended my role to be in molding the first emperor of Rome. When I am dead, your reign will begin. A 
Are you just gonna watch me bleed out? It's finally over. It almost seems unreal. The beginning of what? You have violated every single rule we set out to protect in the first place. You have killed Romans. Senators, even. There's one thing you get to decide for yourself now. We must submit ourselves to the judgment of the Senate, as we discussed. Only then can we begin to undo some of the damage we have caused. Are you stupid? Did you hit your head in battle? We will all be killed! Not all of us. He will probably be condemned to death indeed, but we will not be punished as harshly. We should not get punished at all! We should take over Rome and live like kings! The Anira is right. Surrender will only lead to execution. But... Magister... Surely morals dictate that he should surrender. Doing anything else would be immoral, and thus make him a lesser man. He is like my own child. He would be a lesser man, but a man who is alive. They will not just let us go. We all attacked. Well, I certainly do not want to be executed. May I remind you what you have just said about the expected behavior of a moral individual. I don't consider myself a particularly moral man yet. I don't care about the philosophy of it. If you stay here, more people will die and the chaos will never end. We don't have to turn ourselves in if you're afraid of the consequences. I'm sure Cleopatra will protect you if you flee to Egypt. Don't do this. I'm warning you. I did not help you stop a would-be king only to replace him with another. My debt to you is repaid. I certainly don't owe you any support if you try to overthrow the Republic. It's clear there is no changing your mind. Perhaps this was your goal all along. Well then, this is goodbye. For what it's worth, I hope you rule the city well. Wale. Wale, my friends. Take care of him, Tabat. You are always welcome here. If you change your mind... So it was that the Republic of Rome, which had long rested on an unsteady foundation, was finally torn to the ground. From the rubble rose a new, strong empire. Though the institution of the Senate was maintained for centuries to come, all power was stripped from it and granted almost in full to the new ruler of Rome. From Lost Siam to Legionarius to Legatus and finally to Emperor, the first citizen of Rome had broken with all traditions and betrayed the faith of many during his meteoric rise to power. But as much as those who once held power now loathed their new ruler, he was greatly beloved by the people of Rome, for whom life universally improved under his rule. As he built Rome up from a regional power to an empire spanning the continent, he came to be revered almost like a god. Daenerys stayed by her beloved side, enjoying the life of luxury that Roman society could afford. Though she would never feel quite at home in Rome, it seemed nothing could trouble her as long as they had each other. Eventually, they did make the journey to Sherthia together, where she reconnected with her family. That is still immoral, for you would be avoiding judgment. But I'd feel glad if that happens. Therefore, I am a lesser man. But I feel good about being one. I will see you out of Rome safely. But I cannot follow. For the first time in my life, the city finally accepts me, thanks to you. Wale, my friend. It's been a fun ride. It has been glorious. I'll make the arrangements, Domine.
But I was always free, child. I chose to serve you. Nothing can change my mind. There are some who say it was a sudden change of heart that turned a would-be tyrant from his throne. Most accept the common story. A man pushed to his very limit by the machinations of a corrupt consul. A republic on the brink of becoming an empire, vulnerable to the ambitions of unscrupulous men. A desperate, unlawful action that saved the republic at the cost of one man's career and reputation. Although in one sense the Legatus never returned to Rome, in another, greater sense, he never left. With his earth-shaking actions, he had set Rome upon a course that would guide it through history for centuries to come. It is said that he retired to a palatial estate in Egypt, overlooking the lush banks of the Nile. He had turned his back on the republic that he had saved, but he became instead a close and trusted advisor to Queen Cleopatra, under whose rule Egypt soon regained its independence and sovereignty from Rome. Dayaneva followed her beloved into exile in Egypt, where a life of luxury awaited them in Cleopatra's royal court. Despite her aversion to remaining in one place for long, she took well to the luxury and opulence of the palace, and eventually she and her beloved journeyed to Shirthia together, where Dayaneva reconnected with her family. I admire your principled stance, Domine. But do you understand the consequences? They are likely to execute you. Are you sure you want to do this? You owe nothing to Rome. This city owes you everything. Let us just leave then, if you will not take power. Leave with me. I understand. You are a flawed man, but you are brave. I wish you would just leave. But if this is your choice, so be it. You have made the moral choice. You are a greater man as a consequence. I still am not as great as you. If they kill you, I will kill them. You will give up what we have together? For what? Lofty ideals of your own invention? I thought our love meant more than that. It seems unfathomable that a man would go to such lengths to seize power, only to turn away from it at the last moment and willingly give up his life. Was it guilt that drew him to throw himself at the mercy of the Senate? Or was it principle? After all, if all he cared about was keeping the Republic safe from unscrupulous men, that goal had been achieved. Whatever his reasoning, after his surrender, all blame for the invasion of Rome was placed squarely at his feet. His companions and allies, and the soldiers of his legion, thus escaped condemnation and punishment. Following his execution, a time of great turmoil swept across Rome. The short but bloody civil war had exposed the fragility and the injustice of the Republic, and discontented mobs seized this opportunity to rise up and demand change. As the power of the Senate crumbled, so did the Republic. Rome fell, never again to rise as the global power that it had seemed destined to become. Shortly after his beloved Dominus was executed, Cineros drank hemlock, though she had achieved her vengeance and forgiven herself for her misdeeds. The death of her beloved darkened Deonera's days forever. Though she did return to her family, she soon left them again for the life of a wanderer shunning the company of others who would only remind her of what she had lost. Traitor to the Republic! Murderer of Romans! Enemy of the people! I have had your co-conspirators arrested, and they are patiently waiting for their moment of execution. But my own patience is wearing thin. I know villains like you do not have a sense of honor or virtue. Nevertheless, I know you were at least born Roman. If you have a speck of honor left, confess and surrender. Consul, what are you doing? You can't publicly execute people without trial. Our laws forbid such despotism. As dictator, prescription is well within my rights. The people of Rome saw fit to grant me that power. Who are you 
to question the wisdom of the people. As long as Rome remains in crisis, I shall remain dictator. Your traitor friends are rightfully apprehended. If you want them, you'll have to go through me. It clearly isn't. You are still alive, aren't you? The Gauls were going to attack Rome eventually. I just made sure their attack took place on our terms. So what? A few granaries were burnt down and some people died. We have lost hundredfold more lives in countless wars and no objections were raised. Just like our courageous legionari, their deaths served the Republic. Unless your intention is to bore me to death, I would like to start executing these criminals. This is all shit. Those people are heroes. They've done nothing wrong. Let them go! You have lost your control, Lurko. Look at the faces of these people. Your fellow citizens. They're afraid. Only criminals and traitors should be afraid of me. They're afraid of what you have turned the Republic into. That fear will turn into anger the moment anyone decides to stand up and protect the Republic. You're a good tactician. Consider your position now. Your prisoners are the only advantage you possess. But they're only valuable while they're still alive. The Legatus can wait until you turn yourself into a murderer. Or we can simply kill you and save them all. Then you will have achieved nothing here. You wouldn't do that. You're men of law and order. Do not let us take your vengeance away. Let us die in honor. Believe me, I don't want to die. But I also don't want to see you dead. Don't let him kill us like this. Whatever comes next, we will stand by your side. We will weather the storm as one. Don't do it, my friend. If you strike him down now, you'll give him legitimate cause to kill you. We are not worth that sacrifice. They say you're not a true hero until you die. Enough! Make your decision! As you wish. Who shall we take first? Take me first. If I must die today, I will have it over with. That's not gonna happen. He loves you too much. You have to stay alive for him. This city never wanted me. I've been wandering for too long. A stranger in my own home. Kill me! What do I care? Don't do it! This is not justice! I decide what is just! Execute her! I swear it by all the gods! You have killed an innocent woman! Julia Calido was many things, but she was not innocent. And you know it. A traitor to the Republic has been brought to justice. I truly wonder what you will do now. Witnesses! Who's going to hold me responsible? I am dictator in perpetuo! Executed too. Calm yourselves! People of Rome, I am you! Don't you understand? A firm hand is what the Republic needs! Spot! Tyrant! Down with him! Get him! Pull him down from there! Get me out of here! Just get me out! You're in your home, Kotzo! Coward! Webius Vitellius Lurko, you're not going anywhere! Throw yourself at the mercy of the Senate! You can't do this. You don't have the authority. Don't you dare. Now that's 
That is a style of rhetoric I can get behind. You won. My friend, you did it. I'm sure you have a lot to talk about. It is good to see you up and about, though. You look better. Such things are natural. You've been tested physically and mentally. Furthermore, you've triumphed over your opponent. He has been stripped of his title and office. Even in death, Yulia Kalida has the last laugh. No compromise. Right up until the end. Lurko will certainly be exiled, or even executed. The Senate doesn't have a high opinion of traitors. Obviously, you will have to testify. I know. You paid a heavy price to keep it that way. If you will forgive me for bringing this up, I believe this will be good for your political career. Why not? You are the right age to begin the Cursus Honorum. All Senators have to start somewhere. As far as the Senate is concerned, you are a tragic hero who brought a corrupt Consul to justice. Regardless of what happens to Lyrko, Rome will need a new Consul. And I can't think of a better candidate. Cato is right. Both the Optimates and the Populares already support you. If you run for Senate, the election will result in a landslide win. I have no doubts. You did save them. Those who remain alive have you to thank for it. This chapter ends, and another chapter begins. Fortuna alone knows what the future holds. So ends the abridged history of one of the most beloved consuls of the Republic of Rome. It is thanks to him and his efforts to thwart the corruption and ambition of Vitellius Lurco that Rome remains a proud republic to this day. With his allies in the Senate, he worked tirelessly to address the problems that had plagued the Republic since its birth. Though many among the people of Rome lamented what they saw as a lost opportunity to challenge the status quo, the strengthening of democracy greatly improved life throughout the provinces of Rome. In time, the savior of the Republic took his well-deserved place in history among such heroes as Cincinnatus or Scipio Africanus. Deneira stayed by her beloved side, enjoying the life of luxury that Roman society could afford. Though she would never feel quite at home in Rome, it seemed nothing could trouble her as long as they had each other. Eventually, they did make the journey to Sherthia together, where she reconnected with her family. Truly, you are an interesting person. Very well, I respect your wish. You did save them. Those who remain alive have you to thank for it. This chapter ends, and another chapter begins. Fortuna alone knows what the future holds. Though many believed the savior of Rome would have been instantly elected for consul if he had chosen to run for the office, it seemed he had no appetite for political power any longer. Had his struggle against a rigid and corrupt system soured his view on the Republic? Or did he merely feel that his duty had finally come to an end, releasing him now to live a quiet and humble life and tend to his family's vineyards? We will never know. What is clear from the letters of Cicero is that though he was no longer directly involved in the politics of Rome, his virtuous example and his moral influence had set the Republic on a new course, one that would, over the years, lead to a strengthening of democracy and prosperity for patrician and plebeian alike. Rome, for a time at least, backed away from the temptation of empire and the threat of tyranny that always followed it. Bernera stayed by her beloved side, enjoying the life of luxury that Roman society could afford. Though she would never feel quite at home in Rome, it seemed nothing could trouble her as long as they had each other. Eventually, they did make the journey to Sherthia together, where she reconnected with her family. Drop your weapon, citizen. Step away from the consul. It pains me to say this, but you'll have to come with us. Do as the Praetor says. There's not much I can do at this point. Why did you do this?
Everything we've ever done. Was it all for nothing in the end? It's a selfless act, Kaiser. The final sacrifice of the finest commander Rome has ever known. Don't count on it. Let's go. You look miserable. You don't smell like you've had a bath in a while. I had a chat with Kato. He says not even Kikoro can save you. Why did you do it? We were ready to die for you. The best of warriors fight with an empty mind. It really does sum you up, does it not? I see no reason why we have to leave you in there. You may be waiting to be exiled, but they will never let you live. You're too dangerous. So, do you want to get out of here? You can go to Egypt. Surely Cleopatra will protect you. Oh, my love. You think I will leave you alone with that woman? Not a chance. I'm not leaving your side. Are you joking? Do you think I'd miss this adventure? Egypt, here we come. I must find my sister. From this point on, we shall walk different paths, my friend. I am with you. If there was any doubt, our love binds us. I was hoping you'd say that. <laughs> All right, let's start some trouble. The story of the selfless savior of Rome has long since passed into legend. It is easy these centuries later to forget that in his time he was regarded as a criminal and forced to flee Rome with his friends to escape execution. We are more familiar with his legacy, the towering example of loyalty and righteousness that he came to represent in the years following his exile. He was a servant of Rome who rose time and time again to defend the Republic in war and in politics. It was only at the very end, when the lives of his closest friends were threatened, that he turned his back on law and tradition. The example he set for his fellow Romans has endured to this day. It is said that he sought refuge in Egypt, where he was granted a palatial estate overlooking the lush banks of the Nile. Though he was no longer welcome in the Republic he had saved, he was still held in high esteem by many in Rome and through his connections in the Senate and the trust Queen Cleopatra held in him, he maintained a great degree of influence in Rome as well as Egypt. Thanks to him, the already close ties between the two nations were further strengthened. Deianeva followed her beloved into exile in Egypt, where a life of luxury awaited them in Cleopatra's royal court. Despite her aversion to remaining in one place for long, she took well to the luxury and opulence of the palace, and eventually she and her beloved journeyed to Shirthia together, where Deianeira reconnected with her family. That is for us to decide. Enough, Kaiso. He made his decision. We must respect it. Wally, my friend. I will never forget you. You did well. You did very well. Thank you. Thank you for showing me the very best of Rome. The spirits will remember you. The winds will sing your name in their songs. This is not the end. The sacrifice of the savior of Rome has long since passed into legend. The historian's task is often to distill true events from the myths that are shared among people. But in this case, it proves nearly impossible to do so. It is said that the execution of Rome's savior led to 12 days of sorrow among its people. His corpse was taken from the temple by a mob stricken mad with grief and burned in the forum on a pyre built from the stolen furniture of every building on the Capitolium. Senators, eager to curry populist favor, declared his day of death to be a public holiday. Many built shrines of worship and reverence to their sacrificed hero. Whether these accounts are untrue or perhaps exaggerated, one thing is beyond doubt. Though he had given his life to do so, he had saved the Republic from the brink of tyranny and the temptation of empire. It is thanks to his noble sacrifice that our democracy has only grown stronger and that our Republic endures to this day. Though she had achieved her vengeance and forgiven herself for her misdeeds, the death of her beloved 
darkened Deonera's days forever. Though she did return to her family, she soon left them again for the life of a wanderer, shunning the company of others who would only remind her of what she had lost.